Awesome, you guys. Welcome to our Wednesday calls here on EXP Family Tree. I'm super excited to have some new faces joining us today, actually, which is awesome. Um, as always, you guys, uh, thanks to you that are watching live uh, via live stream through EXP Family Tree. I see you guys, and you can comment or ask questions below the live stream in Workplace, and I'll monitor those for Sharon as well. We'll also post any links that are posted here in the chat there. So you guys can fully engage in it <clears throat> and it remains live streamed forever. So you can go back and watch this, tag other people that should have seen it, utilize it uh, as much and as often as you want. We will also be recording this. So we're gonna go ahead and put this out um, on YouTube, on my YouTube channel and in some other places. So if you wanna share it with somebody who's not with an EXP, you can certainly do that as well. Um, but thanks to you guys that are uh, joining us live. This is gonna be the first of a series of monthly calls that Sharon is gonna do here in EXP Family Tree with me. Sharon is one of my newest partners here with an EXP in Minnesota. And she is an operations uh, guru, for a lack of better words. And I'm going to let her share a little bit about her experiences. But her resume is actually very, very uh, impressive. And she's had a lot of success helping people really, truly optimize their business. And, and as Sharon and I were talking about this, <clears throat> I think a lot of you guys can relate you know, optimizing and simplifying and just really becoming efficient with our business and our time so that we can have a good business and a good life is something that I think we all strive for. But, you know, as Sharon and I both have been in the business for a long time and are, you know, in a certain stage of our life and career, I think it's even like we're more abundantly and uh, clearly aware of how important efficiency and time management and, and making sure that we can get the things done we need to get done, but doing it in a simplified, optimized, and really super efficient way because we want to enjoy life too. We don't want to overcomplicate things. And sometimes I think, Sharon, and you will have some perspective on this as a real estate professional, as a visionary or an entrepreneur, someone who's a big thinker, doesn't like to get in the weeds of the details, which tends to be my, my personality profile. Um, when I think of systems or when I try myself with my personality to employ systems, oftentimes I overcomplicate things. And it's just because I, I'm I'm not really great at systems, you know, um, and that's not natural to me. And I don't yeah. see it the same way that someone like you sees it. So yeah. having someone like Sharon, you know, be alongside you, having an operations professional in your business can really be a game changing situation. I know from personal experience. And so this call monthly with Sharon is going to be for agents, team leaders, people growing their revenue share, as well as um, operations individuals. So if you have somebody that is an operations professional in your business, or you're hiring someone, or you have a virtual assistant, et cetera, please invite them to this because the more exposure that they have to Sharon, quite frankly, I think the better. And if we do this monthly and it grows into something more, obviously Sharon's willing to do more and come from that contribution and give um, as part of EXP and EXP Family Tree. So without further ado, I'm just going to keep letting people in, Sharon, because I know there'll be probably some people coming. Um, huh. I'll monitor the chats in both places, and I'm going to let you go ahead and just do a little bit more of an intro of yourself and then take it away how you want to. You do have capacity to share your screen as well if you need to. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thanks, Carrie. I am so excited, you guys. I am so passionate about this topic. I am uh, not maybe a guru, but just well-seasoned in the world of business. And um, my background is lengthy, but that also just means I've got a lot of years and sun, uh, birthdays around the sun. Um, but I, my background has been a lot of administration. So from an executive assistant to an operations leader in multiple industries. So I've been in the tech industry, I've been in the healthcare industry, I've been in the manufacturing industry, which is where I really got the bulk of my lean Kaizen kind of efficient brain power. And then I've been in real estate for the last six years. Um, the bulk of that was uh, started out as a transaction coordinator. Um, and then moved into director of operations. And about three years ago, I expanded into my own business, um, helping teams that were in a transition between operations talent. So I could literally just come in as an, like an angel DOO and help serve the business, hire and onboard their staff members, and then kind of do an audit of their all their systems to see is like, okay, you know, sometimes it's not always a person. Is it a process? You know, should we be looking at efficiency versus adding more expense to our bottom line in our businesses. So it's really been fun to help business owners and CEOs evolve in their thinking about, do I need a person or a process? And I am so blessed to be surrounded and have been among such great operations leaders that 
have 20 plus agents and three ops people and run in a very efficient business. So as you grow your real estate business as an agent that's looking to grow, expand, always think of like, let's talk about whether it's a process or a person. Because we want you to always have the maximum potential for profitability as a business owner. Um, and specifically for me, I think I gained a lot of appreciation for efficiency. I'm a mom of four adult children. I have five grandsons. I'm a community participant. My husband was in the military, so we mesh really well. And I think I just over the years have learned that without it, I don't have that calmness in my life to control, you know, my day and have predictability. And I am not an A personality. I am not that at all, but I'm just somebody that likes to be organized so that I can then um, help others. And that's always been my, my, my background is helping others, supporting others and elevating others and then helping them grow their business. Yeah. I love it. And one thing that as, as, uh, you know, Sharon said, she has helped large teams, 20 plus agents doing many, many transactions, higher talent, revamp their operations. So whether you're a solo agent, just feeling like you have no systems to someone looking to make your first hire to get some more leverage, to take your business to the next level, or you're a large team or a growing team. <clears throat> I think that all the things that she's going to bring in these monthly masterminds are going to be helpful to you. So yeah. as you guys start to listen to Sharon, I would encourage you to just t uh, chat questions, thoughts, things that you want to learn about for future sessions as well. And I know Sharon's going to have a document that she's going to ask you guys to fill out about that so that she can bring the right topics. But also just as we're talking here, don't be shy to chat in the chat box or raise your hand. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. And <clears throat> so today, because it's kind of a launch of this idea of optimization, I just wanted to kind of the, the, the area that we really need to begin is for ourselves, right? Because um, we can only control our own world as much as we can and then how can we then use that um, efficiency to support others and so for today i just really want to talk about like personal time optimization and the things that we can do to ensure that we're self-led so that we're good leaders for others and uh again i'm i am a licensed agent in minnesota i haven't transacted much but i've touched about 2,000 transactions in the last six years being an assistant and a director of operations and, um, you know, we want to make sure that when we say the word optimized, all we're saying is we want to make the best and most effective use of whatever that is. Okay. So whether that is time, whether that is my energy, whether that is life, whether that is resources, we want to optimize those things uh, so that we are, you know, getting from point A to point B in the most efficient way. <clears throat> and the lean Kaizen kind of version of that is uh, I, this quote that I love. It's like, don't ever do anything excellently that shouldn't be done at all. And when Carrie started off this, she talked about we overcomplicate things. We want to have, I got to buy this app and do this system and buy that thing and do whatever. But really, what value are we adding for our customer? And we are in a relationship and a customer service business. And so all day long, we got to think, if we have a 30-step process to do a referral, we have a 100-step process to transact a pending, what value are we adding in every one of those steps? And that's where you really start to audit your systems is to determine, like, you know, is that really necessary? Is there added value there? Is there added complexity there that we don't want to have to worry about dropping the ball, that type of thing. So, so this today is just like kicking off the ideal and kind of getting the mindset around optimization. Um, and sometimes we personally tend to, to waste time when we don't want to address something or we're kind of avoiding a situation. Um, and so we can say, oh, I don't have time for that, or I didn't get through my checklist today or whatever. But we also have to kind of always come back and say, what's my DNA in that? Why didn't I get to that? Um, and yesterday, I actually had the, the uh, opportunity to listen to a webinar with Brendan Burchard and Chris Suarez, two of my favorite people in the whole world. And Brendan addressed that as well by saying, Sometimes we choose the distraction because we are discouraged about the situation. As agents, you deal with that when you're like, oh, don't want to make that phone call. Don't want to have to call those cold leads. You know, I want to make sure I do that. So I'm going to go over here and do something else. And then you're, you're going to be wondering why your business isn't taking off, right? So 
that's what I wanted to, to really hone in on today. I'm super e efficient about my time. So I know that we, we have an hour, but I'm always going to try to get us done quickly. Um, but when we talk about personal time optimization, a couple of the things I think about is um, how many people have moved in the last like three years? If, I don't know if anybody has. I have. So Carrie has. And I'm actually helping a friend move right now. So when I moved the last time, I'm, I was so committed to being efficient about the move that I did all of the sorting and all the packing and all the labeling. And I was moving from a house I owned to a new house that we built. And my daughter was actually buying our house. So I had space and time and not the stress necessarily, but we literally loaded up with my family on Mother's Day because I hired my own kids and grandkids. And we loaded up and drove an hour, unloaded, and we're having pizza all in the course of about four hours. And I love that we did it that way because it felt like I could breathe, right? I'm helping a friend right now and we are, she's loading, she did not purge. She did not sort. She did, she's throwing stuff into boxes. She's just getting out of there. She's, she's like putting a lot of pressure on herself, but now she's going to touch those things probably 10 times, right? So she's going to have to go through it again and unload and do the things. So the time up front that we spend preparing, planning, assessing, where's it going to go and, and investing that time makes all the difference in the world. Um, I also think of an analogy when uh, I started in real estate, I was working in a corporate role and we used Outlook, <clears throat> did not use Gmail. So I jump into this new role and I have to do Gmail, which I don't understand fully. And it was tripping me up so bad. Like I'm like, I, it's taking me twice as long to find things and sort things. I had no idea what I was doing. So I had to literally Google for Gmail, how to use Gmail and process my emails and tag my emails and find my emails efficient, efficiently. And once I figured it out, it was like, boom, lightning, you know, strike. And I was able to do things uh, more effectively. But I think that's something we have to know about ourselves. Like, what can we do that we identify as that thing that drives us crazy that we're always like, oh, I can't find this or how do I get this? Or I'm just going to wait till the end, but now I'm behind on that. You know, what is the one thing that kind of trips you up every day? And if you're, if this is like relating to anything you're thinking of in the back of your mind right now, it's like, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about, Sharon. I know exactly which process or which thing I need to kind of get better at or more efficient at. You can throw that in the chat. But um, I think it's more of just like, then you have the tools, then you have control over your day. Carrie, any thoughts on that? Awesome. Um, when you think about uh, working every single day, do you have everything at touch access that you need? Are you prepared to be efficient that day? Are you prepared? Is your calendar up to date? Are the files accessible to you? Do you have your call list? Um, I have just recently reorganized my home office and got super clear about what needed to be close to me and what I could put in another area for filing away. Um, again, I want to make sure that the steps I'm taking in between to do the job or get the information out are super efficient. And I think about when, like, if you're going to watch a movie with your husband or your spouse or your partner, and you're like, I made the popcorn, I've got the movie, I got my blanket, I'm going to get bunkered in upstairs and I'm not going anywhere because I'm not missing a thing. And everything I need is like right, right where I need it, right? And you're going to put that much effort into that. You need to put that much effort into preparing for your day. Mm -hmm. um, I found a couple of hacks. So I hope it's okay that I share those with you. But um, one of the things I do on my calendar is... If you're familiar with the Gmail now that have that time optimization piece on it. So if you color code your meetings on your Gmail, it will calculate how much time is being spent on each one of those things. So when you go in, I've got a tag for a client. I've got a tag for my EXP business. I've got a color tag for my personal. I have a color tag for when I'm traveling. So I can look at my calendar and it'll tell me how much time I'm spending in any one of those categories, which I love. The other thing I learned from my good friend, David Breckheimer, who is just a genius when it comes to efficiency and administration, is use your calendar 
description areas to plug in links to where you, where you need to go to conduct that partic particular time block. So for example, I, I'm a like kind of a theme girl, like Mondays I do this, Tuesdays I do that, Wednesdays I do this. So let's say it's today's Wednesday, it's the day I do financials. So I go in, I have at the top of my Wednesday, I have a repeatable calendar invite. And when I click on that, it links me to the three spreadsheets that I have to go into. It links me to my QuickBooks thing. It links me to everything I need. So I don't have to start opening windows. I just go to one thing on my calendar and I can click on any one of those things and get exactly what I need when I need it. So are you prepared each day? And when you look at your calendar and you know that you're gonna to have to have access to your files or you need a person, you know, a meeting with somebody and do you have, are you prepared for that meeting? Use your calendar itself in the description and put as much information in there as you can. Um, I'm, I just like to come prepared and honor the time I've committed to those things because it's such a precious amount of time that we get every single day to do those things. Um, another thing that I um, have found is uh, the ability to bookmark your folders at the top of your window. Now, you know that you can bookmark tabs at the top of your window, but you can also create folders and move those tabs into folders. So when you have you can com consolidate that and you can go into whichever, like my EXP, I have all those things right there. Again, it's so frustrating. The step on that, because I've got like a 50 different favorite tabs and they're scattered. I know. I know. Oh my God, that'd be great. Yes. So <laughs> it's a super awesome you know, thing to be able to go there and I can just look across and I'm only looking at seven folders because those are my seven blocks, right? Those are the people that I'm, or the things I'm most in. And I know I can get at things really quickly. I get really frustrated when I can't find things. So um, yeah, that's been a great hack and I really love it. Um, so Terry, tell me, do you um, like, do you use the Google bar where you can use the tabs within that, where you save your tabs on top? So my tabs are across the thing, and then I got a little arrow that drops them down the side, and they're okay. just like all kinds of them. And so I've put them for different things, and I would love to be able to group them. Yes. I got my four most used across the top, but then the ones that I use maybe 50% of the time are down the side. Yeah. I'm always hunting for them. Yep. Yep, for sure. Um, and and it's it's one of those things where you, you know, and I, I, I always tell Carrie, I'm going to do a, probably like a buzzword bingo because I hate doing that, but they always say slow down to speed up, right? You do have to take the time to find those little things that are going to help you make your day more efficient. And it it's just one of those things where if you commit to an hour of like, okay, I'm going to clean out like my inbox, or I'm going to get rid of some junk mail or something like that, and find ways to just feel like it just takes all the pressure off. I mean, I literally can breathe better when I can have organized a work, organized workspace. Um, another thing I really coach operations people on and agents, but very rarely when you time block an hour to, to work on a project or do something, do you always get it done in that time frame? And then you bleed over into another time block or you bleed over into a meeting or you have to stop. And I, I talk about when, when I was in high school and I just had my 40th class reunion. So this is pre-computer, pre-apps, pre-all the things. Um, you were in English in first period and 10 minutes before the teacher's like, okay, wrap it up. You got, you know, the bell rings, you move on, right? You had no choice. Like you had to leave that classroom, right? But you knew at the end of the day, you were gonna have homework to come back to from that first period. You, you have to give yourself that discipline to end the time block that you're in, have a plan to come back and finish what you need to finish, or at the very least, give yourself that buffer time so that you know that you can not necessarily bleed into the next time block, but you've allowed yourself time at the appropriate amount of time. And a lot of time people kind of, they're so overwhelmed by all the things they have to do that they move nowhere you aren't even moving one step forward. And step one is always better than step none, right? So it's 15 minutes. Don't, don't worry about an hour, do 15 minutes of one thing and just make little bits of progress to it. And you'll just feel better that you started. 
Um, and I love that. And you know, I use that analogy a lot because it, it makes sense to people that are like, yep, I know I have to move on. I have to go on to the next thing. And some people are very much process A to Z people. And some people are batch processors. I'm a batch processor. I like to have one theme going through the day where I can just focus on today, I'm going to make my calls for, you know, my A's. Like if you guys have your databases divided up in that way. Um, and then also just being able to compress your time. So you're not like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to spend a little more time like doing fun things today. And I, I'm going to give myself the break that I need. Or it's like, what if I get it all done in four days and I don't have to work on Friday and I can compress my time. It's that analogy of like, when you're going to go on vacation, how you, how, how much work gets done before you go on vacation. Right. Um, any thoughts, any questions showing up yet, Carrie? No, I'd love to know how you can read those folders. Yeah, Terry had a few comments, but I think he also said that. Um, okay. Joe says guilty of bleed over. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, so just comments, no questions yet, and no questions, just lots of people watching online, but no questions. Awesome, perfect. So again, when it comes to your personal, um, Ownership of your personal schedule is one thing. Personal um, accountability. So we want to talk about when we optimize a process and we're optimizing our time and we're optimizing our personal day, are we taking the steps to review things in advance to make sure that we're prepared for that day and pre prepared for that meeting? I think the thing that one of my triggers is watching agents create contracts on their phones. I'm like, okay, um, so you couldn't find time to get your laptop up and like work in a, an environment where you're going to be really purposeful. I'm thinking you're writing million dollar contracts off your phone because you're not willing to take a step back and realize you're a business owner that has a big accountability here, right? So do you have time in your day blocked for you to write contracts? Do you have time in your day blocked in order to um, make your phone calls? Do you have time in your day blocked to make some personal phone calls? Um, and, and when it comes to optimizing your personal job, your personal role, um, what are you doing to make sure that you're not the bottleneck, you're not the issue? Because we want to make sure that our future conversations are going to be about the process themselves and what role you play in those processes, whether you're the operator that's running the process or you're the agent that has to be a part of the process. When you aren't able to complete your part of it because you're so distracted and your life is kind of a hot mess, it's going to put be the bottleneck for the success of the entire process too. And our goal, again, is customer service. We want to make sure that we're providing that highest level of customer service, me for to you as an agent or as an owner, or us to our, our buyer and seller clients and, and future investors or whoever that may be. Um, I also was just thinking, too, about uh, hacks. And so a couple of recommended books I'm going to share with you guys because I love this. Um, so I have a pile over here because I'm a book reader, but... Um, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. So we talk a lot about habits, guys, and this is a lot about habits. This is about change management. When we talk about optimization, it is like reviewing, auditing, identifying, changing, like what should be, what could we take out of this? Does this make sense? Who should be doing this? That's another area we'll cover in the future. Um, David Allen's Getting Things Done is always a, a great book. It it's really talks about processing your brain. Um, if you haven't read David Allen's Getting Things Done, it's life-changing. What it talks about is you can't hold all of this in your brain. It doesn't mean work. It means life, everything in your life. <laughs> and at my age, I am officially like my hard drive is full. So I have to get it out onto paper or whatever it is, whether, and when it hits, I have to write it down. So I literally have a a, a, a marker in my bathroom and I write on my mirror like when it hits me in, in the morning when I'm getting ready I have a whiteboard marker and I just write it on my mirror as I go because that's the time when start things start rattling off and then I just take a screenshot of that and erase it and walk away you know so I also know that um, when you get it onto paper or whatever note-taking app you have just make sure it's the one that works for you. I am still a very tactile person. I write 
things on a legal pad and then I trans put it back into a to-do list for follow-up later. But I've always been a very physical file person because that's my background. That's how I grew up. Um, and people, I see a ton of chatter out in Facebook with operations people and agents like, what's the best CRM and what's the best, you know, transaction management, you know, software and what's the best note taking app and what's the next, the one you'll use is the best one for you. And so if you think you're going to use this one and then a week goes by and you haven't even tried to adapt to it and you keep reverting back to the thing, it's just like when you say working on your strengths versus your weaknesses. <laughs> Revert to the thing that you know you're going to use, accept it, know that it's your way, but you'll still have to have a way to you know, pull that stuff, in, information out and put it somewhere for follow-up in the background. Um, so books, that, another book that I read is called The Checklist Manifesto. Um, and that one's really about the need for checklists and processes. And we're, we're going to get into that in the next session we have in August coming up. But the, the premise of that book is about physicians and how when you come into the emergency room and they identify what's going on with you, everybody just jumps into the role that they need to be and they don't miss a beat because they know they have to follow this precise checklist to get you healthy again, right? So having like some way to document that in the, fu in the future is um, super important. Um, the one thing, it's a classic Gary Keller. I was a Keller Williams agent for five years and I appreciate Gary, you know, the one thing and the MREA are great books for prioritizing and, and helping you become really purposeful about using your time and identifying your, um, your tasks. And then Atomic Havocs. And I know Carrie's talked about that one a ton. Um, and again, it's just like, when you read the books, I actually log my books and I try to put down like two to three things I want to uh, implement afterwards. And so then I can always come back and say, um, you know, oh, yep, I got that from that book. So it's never going to be a hundred percent of it, but pieces of it will always resonate with you. Um, email. I don't know about you guys, but I when I see somebody who has an inbox of 15,000 unread emails, I get sick to my stomach. And there is a great app called um, Clean Email. You can log in. It, you can either buy a free version or a um, paid version. And it logs in and it catalog catalogs your inbox. <clears throat> and then it tells you which ones are subscriptions, which ones could be... Um, you know, junk, which ones are newsletters, whatever, and you can massively clean up your inbox that way. I saw in the chat, someone asked about the book titles and stuff. At the end of the webinar or at end of our session today, I do have a great little link so you can get the guide from our talk today. And I'll share with you the software and the books and the, the ideas that we've talked about so far today, and then give you the opportunity to give us some ideas of what we'd like to hear um, in the future episodes. So um, and then a third app that I really love is called Otter. And with all of the chat GPT stuff going on now, guys, Otter is a game changer for me as an operations person and as a consultant. It is a um, AI tool. It is, uh, you can record a, a meeting. It transcribes as you record, it summarizes the recording, and then you can get a to-do list from that recording. And I use it for when I'm watching webinars or I'm like, even if I listen to a book, it'll help me summarize the book. It is, like I said, it's game changing. You can sync it to your calendar so that every time I have a meeting come up, it pops up and says, are we recording this one? And so then I can, you know, make sure I have those notes. And at the end, you just come back and you can, cap, you know, capture the, the notes or the transcription of the parts that you want and share them as summary to anybody else that may have to have it. That was an awesome app that I have had for about a year now. And then um, I'm, an, I'm a new Apple user, like I'm an iPhone user, never had a MacBook. I was like, oh, I didn't know if I could do it. I literally had to quit a college class because it was using Macs and I'd never used one in my life. Um, so I was like, I jumped on board and now I love it. Uh, but I do find that the efficiency of having you know, your text messages and your everything synced together throughout the day. So then you never have to wonder if you're you know, missing something over here and you can turn off those notifications. But um, I have an iPad that I use for my notes taking because I am, again, I am a physical note taker. 
but there is a great notes app that I love and it's searchable so that I can take notes on any meeting that I'm at. I can change the color of my pen on my iPad so I can make it really like pop to me and it makes sense to me, but I'm a very much brain to paper person where I have to write things down. And so that has been also a, a tool that I've used a ton and it keeps all my notes in electronic version, but handwritten. And again, very searchable. You can put them in folders so that you can keep track of whichever notes you have. And again, I, I have control then. I have one notebook. I have my Otter notes so I can take notes for meetings. I have all of my links at the top of my um, window. I have my calendar with all the links that I need for every meeting I have. And at the end of the day, I'm just looking at um, screenshots are my savior. So I take a ton of screenshots so that I know that I don't forget something and go through those and, and categorize them. But give yourself time at the end of every day to download these things and make sure that you've now captured everything you've done. You have a plan for the next day, that extra 15 minutes, whether the night before or first thing in the morning to get yourself ready for the next day makes you the most like optimized person uh, for, for the day ahead. So I just wanted to kind of share some of my personal hacks and tools and ideas, how I personally can take control of my own business and my own life um, to help others. And then in the future, we'll talk about the next steps, which is how can we help our businesses become more optimized, efficient, um, save you time, save you money, and um, help you guys do your best work. Love it. So let's open up some, so we are going to give you all the things that Sharon talked about, as you mentioned, uh, Sharon, so you guys will have that. So don't worry about taking all the notes. Um, so, oh, and she already created the, there's also a form here. So make sure you guys copy that if you don't mind. I'm going to copy and paste this, uh, Sharon, to our workplace uh, live stream because a lot of people are watching so they can get the guide as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look at the notes. There's uh, Evernote was a question from, from nope. Noel. It's called Good Notes. Good Notes. Yep. Um, and then Joe says, high performance habits, getting things done. Um, yes, we're going to give you a list of the book titles. Write notes on paper and type them in Microsoft OneNote. OneNote allows me to use tabs and pages. It also has a search function so I can find something quickly. That's a great tip from Joe. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, good notes. Okay, cool. So now unmute yourself if you want to. What um what from a, an optimization perspective in your business are any of you really struggling with where we can maybe dive a little bit deeper for a couple of minutes before uh, we end the call? We are gonna try to end it right around um uh, 1145 or whatever time zone you're in 45 minutes after just to kind of keep uh, our time efficient. Sharon said, you know, I wanna be efficient. I wanna keep it going, get people back to work. That's going to be the MO of what I uh, uh, train on and coach on. And so we're going to keep that consistent in these monthly calls too. But let's talk about things that you're actually working on or dealing with in your business right now. Anyone? I'm going to see if there's anything in the live stream. A bunch of people watching. Don't be shy in the live stream, you guys. You can chat in the comments below as well. Right now, I'm trying to organize everything from going from one brokerage to another, from one state to another, and just getting everything switched over. So it's doing all the letterheads, the branding, the everything from there. So slowly working on that. So yeah, any tips and tricks? I, I just did that too. You know, I just joined DXP in May. And I will say another, thanks for reminding me, Terry. Uh, one of the other things I've done is I've created, I have more than one email like most people do but I have one gmail account is where all of my news newsletters all of my shopping all of my other junk goes because I want to keep my inbox more on that like I know that that's important so when I sign up for a newsletter I sign up for a freebie or a vendor or something I always use this other inbox and that way I keep those things separate and I can always like us you know sort them that way I so wish I started that. <laughs> <laughs> There's still uh, hope. <laughs> do you use zero inbox at all? Um, I had team members that did that, and I just never got on board because I've got like 50,000 emails or even 100. Right. It, uh, the promotion ones are the unread. The important ones are the red. I'll give you that yeah. peace of mind. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so one of the things I am a big tagger, like I have tags on everything I do. I don't do a lot of rules because I want to see them I, it, when they go over into this side folder. I don't always look at them right away. One of the things I do is I have um, all, e all, all email always on. I don't have the tabs on the top for promotions or whatever because I might miss something. Um, but I'm super high on um, the tags. And in Gmail, when I do my tags, I have five folders that are always at the top because you can do like underscore, underscore, um, share and follow up. And then I that's the very, very top one. It will never move below that unless I put three underscores, right? So I kind of manipulate those in a way that I can put them there. I do empty my inbox every day into a to be sorted folder. And so I know that when the next day comes, I'm seeing brand new stuff coming through, but I'm over here processing through all of my to be sorted. And when I do that, I'm always doing the, again, I feel like I'm a pretty good Gmail person now after going through the trauma of moving over from Outlook. But when you get an email and you hit those three dots that say more, and then it says filter messages like this, and now you've got every message from Carrie, and I can just take them all Carrie EXP and they go over here, right? So I in Outlook, you could filter them differently and, and move them. But now I just do them in chunks like that. And I, I, I'm able to process through my to be sorted emails pretty fast. Um, so then again, I use multiple tags because I want to say share and follow up or um, it's, or to be followed because sometimes you don't get an answer right away, right? So I'm keeping those at the top of mind. Anything calendar related that I haven't respond, you know, heard of, I don't do boomerang. Some people do boomerang and I just clutters my inbox. I don't really care for that. Um, but yeah, I, I use a ton of tags, zero inbox kind of because it's, pretty much shoved over into another folder that I work on separately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What else? Don Dietz has his hand up. Thank you for noticing, Sharon. Of course. Hey, Carrie. First of all, please forgive me for being very late to the meeting, right? Like I saw the last five minutes. And I jumped because I saw Sharon's name when I was going through the chat and Carrie has shared going live now with Sharon Casey. I'm like, Oh my God, I got to get on there. So uh, here's my question. Uh, I've got a half a dozen teams that are doing big numbers that are all joining, but they're all so busy. They can't find the time to actually make the transition. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I were able to, if I were you, uh, I would be able to say, okay, here's what we need to do in order to make this transition successful. Is there something that exists, uh, Sharon, that I can plug into? I'm a plug and play person. I'm not looking for the easy way. I'm just looking for the way. Yeah. Um, I, I know um, you stop talking because you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. And Carrie could probably speak to this too, because that's something we're so passionate about, like bringing that value to EXP and all of those people that need that. But I think ultimately, I, I'm not a psychologist person at all. I have always been team mom. Like I'm like mother figure to everybody, but it's really like simplifying it, breaking it down. Because I think when people think they have to make this big move, they're going to be like, I've got a gazillion things I have to do and all these things. And that's not, not true, but what's the most important thing that has to get done first? Um, you know, like everything has a different level of, you know, importance. So helping, you know, plug into working with your people, like bringing some, some, you know, clarity to what needs to be done and a timeline around how to do it and eliminating the fear and the and the chaos that they feel is going to happen but having a plan for it i think it's just having those conversations and kind of talking them off the ledge that change is change and how you approach it and how you deal with it like the what is the most important thing and that's the first thing and then the next thing and the rest will happen. And I found personally just moving my business over, um, it's just, you know, there's five really top things you have to do and working with your brokerage, moving over the, you know, to the brokerage, doing all those things. But the rest of it, it can be business as usual as you adopt and adapt, right? Because you don't have, 
necessarily have to change a lot about your business unless it's really going to enhance your business further, right? So EXP offers a ton of resources, tools, systems, things like that. But if you have already taken the time and you are an efficient you know, person and work well within the systems that you have, there's an, a good way to kind of move those over or keep them temporarily until you can make a decision about what the future would look like. I think we try to make too many decisions. Once. Too fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is, John, have them attend the monthly mastermind here with Sharon, <clears throat> because my overarching observation in general with agents that are top producers is it's not necessarily, the transition is a transition. It is a change. There's no doubt about it but it's actually that they aren't very optimized in their business to start with in the first place. No. So it's like, it's just a lingering effect of that. They don't have a lot of organization. And then, you know, when you don't have a lot of organization and you make a change, then it, it, it like exasperates the reality. So I think when we get them into the systems, um, my experience is get them involved, get them engaged, get them attending things so that they can figure out oh, then this is a good optimization to make. I'll make one change to my business and that's going to help here. That's going to help here. And if they are looking for assistance, um, if they're looking for admin support, transaction coordination, and some systems around that, whether you are, John, that you're going to deploy as a shared resource locally to all of those top agents, or there are singular top agents that continue to want to grow that, you know, Sharon would be a great resource because she is still doing that for people. So I would encourage you guys to meet if you think that would be helpful. But I find that, you know, what Sharon's going to do in these monthly calls <clears throat> is talk about optimizing business. So once we just get them transitioned into EXP and it's business as usual, they're, they're now worried about all of their systems because they made a change and they're like, I need to adopt everything. But what do they even have right now? And can we help bring them that clarity? And if they came consistently and they met Sharon and, and had that opportunity, they might use these monthly calls as like the checkpoint for, oh, I'm going to move forward with this one thing. And then when I come on the call next month, we're going to talk about something else. So that might be helpful too. Yeah. And I will say, John, when Carrie and I put this out that we were doing this mastermind, I had somebody call me that's not an EXP agent. She's like, oh my gosh, I just need to talk to you and find out like, what is, what do I need? And about a 45 minute conversation brought a lot of clarity to that, you know, and understanding do you have a person in the role that shouldn't be in that role? Do you have a system that isn't working for you? Mm -hmm. Have you not invested the time to get optimized yet? And you already have identified that's a need. So, you know, I can certainly be brought in early on to do an audit or an assessment and provide them with some peace of mind that we, we will help them along the way. And, we, and you and the rest of the folks that at ESP that could utilize me or others, there's a ton of other options out there, but um, I think the, the thing is I can get them off the, I think I, I feel like I have that type of personality that brings people into, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm good now. I know that we're taken care of. I know that we can prioritize things and I know that we'll be okay making this huge change, you know, because ultimately we want to make sure that it stays business as usual, that they're still producing, that they're still taking care of their clients. And that's the biggest thing is like, we don't want this to be a hiccup in their their current business. We want that to be, we want to enhance their business and slowly like move, make the move over and then show that super high value of customer care. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's and I think really it's, good. Yeah. Really I think good. it's first just focus on the transition and don't overthink anything. That's what I, I tell people just focus on that transition and just moved over business as usual. For the most part, your MLS changes over, your local board changes over, your super changes over. You should be able to continue to write offers and do things and not worry about much other than your clients, which is the most important. And then once you're settled in and doing business as usual, it's just going to be one thing at a time. And I always think it's things like, uh, you know, marketing listings and, you know, using, using what did you use before and what are you replacing that with now? Your presentations, things that are just going to be revenue generating, things that you just need to quick change over. How do you do that? What does that look like? And then once that's done, what are you using for a CRM and how can you start adopting KV Core if that makes sense or something else? Um, 
And then it's like all the above things that are like extra added value we can provide to people through Sharon and others and this call and other things that are like, okay, you're doing your business and it's fine, but it's really not as optimized as it could be. So let's just help you start to slowly, but surely now that you're in our world here at EXP, make one little change at a time that's going to ultimately give you a lot of growth. And sometimes that is hiring somebody. Sometimes yeah. that's just optimizing a system. Oh, and sometimes it's optimizing the talent you have because many times when you're a single agent or growing a team and you're still, you're kind of like stretching the boundaries of like, whoa, I might have to add a VA or I need to add one more person. The talent of the person that's in the seat right now, what is the thing that brings them the joy and the energy and the thing? And let's utilize their skills and, and up, you know, level them up and find someone else to can do the, the other tasks that maybe bring them more energy. And so we wanna make sure that we're retaining those people or if we have to make a change, like is it uh, moving somebody out, up, over? What does it mean? But if we can get the system and the process to be efficient and automations are amazing, we'll talk a lot about automations in the future, but you know, getting through some of that before you have to say, oh, I have to spend another X dollars on another body to help me get through this. And all we are is just unorganized. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate you staying over time. I'm watching the clock and I know we're over time. Um, you know, Sharon, it's interesting because I'm, I'm listening to you really carefully in um, organization uh, systems, uh, everything that you are amazing at i suck at that and it's like a foreign language i feel like i've tuned into a, a tv show in another country and i can't understand a word that's being said and it's just so natural for you i can do a needs analysis find their pain cure the pain but as soon as they say okay i'm ready to go but and but always followed by an administrative conversation i get stuck right there. Yeah. And I think that we have to be considerate of the fact that I have been given a huge blessing to have been empowered to do my job. And that the mega agents that I have worked with and the team leaders that I have worked with have trusted me in their world to do my job. And that's the job they don't have the skill set for nor want to do. And therefore we're partners. And I think that's where it comes from as you grow a business. And I think for younger agents that are like super like blowing things up, right. And having success. And now you are a people leader. That is the biggest challenge because you want all the benefits of growing a big team with agents and people, but ultimately you're a people leader and you have to take the time to lead those people. And the people need to have access to you to make good decisions about the business with your blessing so that things can move along. But if you fully know and have recognized and raised your hand saying, I am not an ops guy, then find the person that you fully trust to be that person and, and leverage them to death. You know, and, and that's what makes me happy because I don't want to do what you do. I've told people in five and a half years of real estate, I've done two transactions, one for myself and one for my daughter. You know, I'm, I am not a salesperson. I don't even like to sell raffle tickets, but I love, love, love operations, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. I just think that Sharon's going to be a great resource to some of our uh, agents that need optimization, but also to you, John, if you want to try to put something together for a shared resource for all of your agents, I think Sharon would be a great resource to just pick her brain. So you guys definitely should connect on work chat um, because, you know, and we're building some things that you're going to be able to plug into John, but for your local team, there's probably some optimizations there for sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Really quick as we leave, there was a quick question, Sharon. I just want to know if you had an answer to it for Joe. Um, I use Outlook, can't seem to make Gmail work uh, for me. Um, one second, I'm trying to read it. Um, I think what he's I trying to say- I can just unmute if I want. Oh, thank yeah, you, Joe. Please. Thank yeah. you. All right. So Sharon, you know Outlook. On the left side, I go ahead and I create a subfolder for each one of my properties and I name it by the address. Yep. Um, the subject line of every email for that transaction, it doesn't matter who it's going to, it starts out with a property address, a tack mark, and then whatever it's about, yep. because it needs to be specific for what it's about. I handle the yep. email once and that's it. It goes into that subfolder. But is there a way to make Gmail work that way? Because 
once I'm done with that property, I drop it into a different folder that says closed transaction. Yeah. Um, and then I yeah. did notice Heidi put another one in there that we can take that Sky Slope email, CC it in there, and it saves all that stuff in Sky Slope, which is awesome. I didn't know we could do that. So thank you, Heidi. Yeah. No, and Gmail is a little clunkier in the degree of the structure of the folder. So you have to create, like, I've worked with a team that has active listings folder, and then it's a parent folder, and then the other folder goes underneath it, and then you can collapse all of those, right? But there it's still the same concept what you're talking about and then you can do a rule that anything that comes in with that address gets tagged for that property and it will automatically push it underneath that that parent folder and then i still see it in the unread email so i can still address it once and then mm -hmm. it just disappears yeah. from there so the biggest aha for me guys and i don't know if this was for you but an inbox is a tag so if it's still if you look at your current gmail and you open it up and you see there's a tag that says inbox it'll stay in your inbox as long as that tag is there and it's not archived and if you leave the inbox tag on and tag the property address or share and follow up or whatever else it'll stay in your inbox and be over on the left so as long as you don't remove that inbox tag and it, the unread still shows up you'll see it come in it'll just pre-tag it and then the minute you don't want it in your inbox actively anymore, you just delete that inbox tag. Does that make so, sense? Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. So uh, Sharon, as we close, uh, we want people to fill out the doc. Yep. Okay. Yep. You want to give instructions for next call? Yeah. So a um, couple of things. So again, I'm new to ex EXP. I've been working with clients over the last few years, but I've recognized I'm not finding a, a, like a, a group like me in, in workplace yet. So I might like dive into seeing if that's an option where we can kind of create this operations mastermind <laughs> group. Secondly, um, office hours. I'd love to offer office hours, like, you know, 30 minutes a day where if someone can just pop into my calendar, we just have a mastermind with whoever shows up at that office hour time. And I'd love to do that. Um, happy to share my, you know, information and connect with people. When you fill out that link, I'll have your email. And if you want to just put a note at the bottom saying, I need your help, help me out here. What can I do? Or I'd love you to meet my operations person. I'd be happy to, to talk with them as well. Um, and next month, we're what, August 26th, Carrie? Yeah, August 23rd, it looks 23rd. like. Perfect. Yep. Yeah. So um, I think the goal for next month is really to take, take you through the process of auditing a process like that you are currently doing and you feel like I, I don't, I don't do it well. It isn't, you know, doing us any service. Like it's not adding any value. How can I change this? And we'll walk through the process of identifying what is value. Add, studio, what is value. And Z salon and spa. Sorry, one second. I don't know what's happening. That's okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Along with any other suggestions that we're seeing now, I've already had a bunch of people fill this form out, which is awesome, and and see if we can like do that type of a and a up front for those who become our regular listeners. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I just posted you guys in the workplace. Remember, this is live stream. So below the live stream, the live stream stays into e in EXP Family Tree forever. I did post uh, this uh, link to the Google Doc, the form. So fill it out if you didn't yet. And then, you know, make sure you let us know who would like a work chat to talk operations with Sharon ongoing, because we can certainly grab a work chat and add the people that want to be added to it. Who would like to do a weekly open office hours with Sharon, maybe on the weeks that she isn't doing the mastermind, you know, let us know so that we can really be here. Um, if there are people that want to do that, we want to do it for you. Um, and, and Sharon, um, maybe reach out to John because he may want his people to come on something like that as well. Yeah. And I think there's a number of his agents that could utilize your services potentially also. So, um, Anyways, uh, you know, you guys let us know what you need. We see that there is a need here. Sharon is one of the best to help us with this. And I think um, all of us, no matter where we're at in our business, can benefit, benefit from optimizing, simplifying, and just becoming more efficient in our business and our life. So I'm looking forward to next month. It's the 23rd. You guys will see it promoted here in EXP Family Tree as always when we put out our August session so that you can save uh, the date for sure. Always the same link, always live streamed here in EXP Family Tree, always recorded and put back on my YouTube channel to watch it later or to share it with somebody else as well.
All right, you guys. Well, see you soon. Thank you. Thank so you fun, guys. Yes, it was so fun. <laughs>